Disarm any enemy charges set. What's going on guys? This is Murder's Brigade 99 coming to you once again with another session of Kill Zone Shadowfall. Alright guys, this time we're gonna visit the factory. And actually, uh, I don't think I played, or actually, let me take that back, not played, but I don't think I showcased a factory map in a while, right? So I think this will be uh, a revisit of one of the maps that I've basically been a little foreign to as far as uploads are concerned. All right, so this time around, we're going to go ahead and dabble a little bit with the assault class. Now, uh, one thing uh, that some of you guys may notice within the next few videos is that I have pretty much, you know, I'm starting to wean myself off the breast, so to speak. Right. In other words, since the game's release, I've been uh, using the support class. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys can tell by uh, by pretty much all of my uploads and um at least up to this point, I've only played the assault class to the extent that, um, you know, I would gain unlocks. And then as soon as I would gain a certain amount of unlocks, I would basically just go back to my support role. Or it'll be a situation wherein I might, you know, start off with the assault class. But if I notice that I'm on a team of noobs, I would just go ahead and return to the support class because I absolutely hate to be on a team with multiple support members and instead of playing as support they are using the support right and that's one thing that really irks my nerve and I'm pretty sure that you guys should be able to tell that by now now let me just go ahead and explain the difference between uh, playing a class and using a class all right when you're using a class, you just basically selected it because, I mean, maybe you like the cosmetics, right? Maybe you like the way the class looks, or maybe you may prefer the weapons within the class. But everything else, you're not really too concerned with, right? You're not really concerned with anything other than, oh, well, okay, this weapon kind of feels good. It's kind of cool. You know, there's a few perks in it. I'll go ahead and stick with it. On the other hand, when you're using, well, actually, let me take that back. That's using a class. On the other hand, when you're playing a class, you are not only using, you know, that individual class, but you are playing it with its abilities. So in other words, a person who just uh, decides to use a support class, yet they don't revive, don't drop any beacons, don't drop any turrets. They're basically just using the support class, but they're not playing it. And there's a big difference, right? So in other words, whenever I got on teams and let's just say I may start off as a scout or, you know, maybe I want to experiment with the assault class a little bit. If I noticed that I was on a team with multiple support guys and I always had to run back from the base or people weren't getting healed or there wasn't enough ground support, I would just go ahead, abandon that initial effort and just go ahead and return to the support class. But you know what? I really want to start to play super aggressively. Right? And really maximize a lot of the perks that come with the assault class. Now, one thing, you know, and I and I think especially for you guys that know me kind of like from uh, Dark Souls, you would know the one thing about me, I like to be a well-rounded player. Right? I never wanted to be um, the type of person that is one-dimensional or has a one-dimensional play style. In other words, I like to be a jack-of-all-trades. You know, I mean, like even with Dark Souls, for a lot of you guys uh, who are with me because of Dark Souls, you would know. I mean, I've dealt with dex weapons. I've dealt with quality weapons. I've even dealt with strength weapons. Right. I've played with uh, fast rolling builds. I've experimented with the Darkwood Grain Ring when the first was uh, when the game was first released. And I've even dealt with medium rollers. Uh, I've dealt with, you know, faith builds hybrid builds sorcerer builds and even in that game you know i just never really wanted to be a one-dimensional player because one of the downsides to being one-dimensional one of the downsides is um basically your versatility is limited now uh, of course there is a benefit 
For a lot of people who concentrate their energies or their efforts into that one thing, they tend to be really good at that one thing. Me, on the other hand, I like to do pretty well with multiple things. Now, admittedly, I won't, you know, really be taking the time to mess around with the scout class. I'm not really interested in trying to become a good scout class member because, you know, the cloud, the class just simply doesn't appeal to me. You know, I'm not the type of person I like to sit back in the background, be extra cautious and, you know, have all this extra patience to do things that I can get in there get hands on and take care of myself. So the scout class, you know, though I will play uh, with that class to be able to um, get all, well, actually not get all, but get as many unlocks as I can. I'm not really interested in playing that class outside of achieving the, uh, the unlocks. All right. So I highly doubt that I'll be messing around with that now. For the purposes of, you know, YouTube uploads, I will put up some videos with me uh, messing around with the scout class. But don't expect a lot of videos you know that's it's just really not me you know i've seen a few guys in their uploads i've even noticed a few montages of guys just going around and basically just spamming the uh, brutal melees while hitting that just simply does not appeal to me you know uh, granted it may be cool to some people to walk around you know like the pre as a matter of fact i think uh, one of those my and actually the montage is actually you know it's pretty cool I'm just saying that it's not really my play style. As a matter of fact, I think the montage is called the Predator or the Predator is back or something like that, you know. And he's kind of got the Predator noises going on and he's just going around and, you know, spamming the brutal melee. And actually, the video itself is actually cool. I'm just saying it just simply doesn't fit my style uh, of gameplay. Right. So, you know, I don't want to really get off the subject too much. But at the end of the day, I'm going to really start dabbling with the assault class because, like I said before, um, soon Gorilla is going to be um, allow allowing us to create clans, either create or become a part of a clan. And I really want to be versatile. You know, with the two months that I've had this game, I have basically dedicated it all to support. Now, one of the benefits to crossing over classes is um, for the and actually one thing that I do while I play assault and not only do I attack objectives not only do I attempt to defend objectives but I also circle around perimeters right one of the main reasons why I circle around perimeters especially in a lot um, in certain areas one of the main reasons why I do that is because with me starting off as a support class I know a heck of a lot of locations for spawn beacons a whole bunch of locations on pretty much all of the current maps that we have and seeing that and knowing how important spawn beacons are you know one of the things that I do when I'm sweeping you know may it be in an attempt to uh, flank an opposing team may it be you know just to take their attention off of my team you know to kind of shift the attention on me because in other words let's just say um, uh, your opposition is facing you in one direction right and you notice like man these guys are really putting up a good defense and I can't really get through well if you have one or two you actually don't even really need that many if you have one or two uh, aggressive assault players you can actually confuse them by coming around flanking them right and once you flank them uh, you can go ahead and uh, shift their attention because in other words if they're attacking from the front all of a sudden you and a fellow assault guy or maybe you and a support guy are coming behind them you know maybe one guy is dropping a ground support turret and all of a sudden like holy crap we're all getting shot in the back and let's just say you got an assault guy with his noob tube I mean he's dropping HE rounds and everything you know you may bring you may bring them off guard so like I said before, in addition to pursuing missions, in addition to defending those missions, one thing that I do as an assault player is I look for beacons because in pretty much all of these maps, I know. Now, I'm not saying uh, because, in other words, it's pretty arrogant for you to say, I know where they will put it. Right. I just, because, in other words, you don't know exactly because think about it. You could be dealing with a team that um, has relatively inexperienced support guys. Right. So if they're relatively inexperienced, they may put them in some bad areas, you know, right, like some open areas, some obvious areas. But there's also some parts uh, that are a little more hidden, but relatively close to the objective. 
Why do I know that? Because I concentrated my energies with the support class for pretty much since the game's release. Right, so I think having that experience will definitely help me as an assault class member. So, um, one thing that I've definitely noticed and that I had to get used to uh, was the change of weapons. You know, with me using the assault class, well actually, let me take that back, with me using the support class uh, for these past two months, I have really gotten used to the feel of these support weapons, namely the pulver. You know, every now and then the stova, and actually I think I'm going to do uh, uh, a few videos with the stova. I mean, granted, I am kind of dabbling with the support class, but I do want to have a slight, uh, well actually not slight, but I do want to have a short discussion um, about the stova. You know, because I think that weapon really has a lot of potential, but as with many things, it has its shortcomings. Right now, it would definitely not be one of those conversations where I'm saying this need a nerf, that need a buff. Right? I'm not one of those guys uh, that is always asking for or crying for buffs or nerfs. You know, a lot of times um, when these people put, when these developers put these games together, granted they put a lot of time, they put a lot of thought into it. And when you first get the product, you know, let's just say you're not as successful with one or two things. Well, just because you're not necessarily successful with something doesn't mean that that thing needs to be buffed or nerfed. It just means that perhaps you haven't invested enough energies into it. Case in point, you know, I'll be on the uh, forums like every now and then I'll go ahead and frequent them. You know, I'll say several times a week, maybe two or three times a week. You, know, you guys notice I'm trying to flank these guys from the back. You guys notice what I'm doing? I'm trying to shift the attention away from my team and try to get some kills so that at least my team can go ahead and pursue the objective right so you know that's i mean but but i and you guys noticed my team was able to get the objective had a nice little deterrent back there so even if they come back up the stairs or from around the corner from their home base guess what they're going to have you guys notice these guys are dying that one death right there and as they proceed to push on forward if no one remembers that they got shot in the back guess what i have a surprise there so oftentimes i mean even now you know even though i'm working you guys notice i'm continuing to flank and why am i continuing to flank because i'm trying to shift the attention and if you're dealing with a good support team and actually you don't even have to be a good assault class you just have to be a good team member period you know, because it just seems like so many people when I'm playing in these public games, uh, like they'll engage in a firefight and they'll just stick with that firefight in one direction. And I'm thinking to myself, like, OK, how come none of these people said to themselves, you know what? This firefight is pretty much going nowhere. Let me try to approach it from a different direction. I mean, why that simple concept doesn't dawn on more people, I do not understand. But at the end of the day, uh, the more people like me who are able to flank, the more kills I'll get, and the more likely I will be um, to help contribute to our team's wins, <laughs> right? So that's really all I'm concerned with at the end of the day. Now, uh, despite me uh, using more assault class than what I have done in the past, one thing that I do uh, one thing that I definitely do, uh, I switch off. Now, I do remember in, uh, I think, one of the more recent videos, I think I uploaded it last week, I was pretty much talking about uh, how you don't have to stick with one ability. And, uh, you know, um, perhaps the idea that more people don't use more spawn beacons because they think if they use it, they'll be locked into that ability, which is not the case. So a lot of times, let's just say I'm on a team and I notice we don't have spawn beacons. Yet, I want to work on my assault class. You know, sometimes I'll just go ahead, throw out a support, throw out a spawn beacon, hurry up next time I die, switch to uh, assault class. Or let's just say we need a good, um, we need some good defensive rounds going down range, you know, aimed at a mission or aimed at a certain objective. Guess what I'll do? Switch off to a, uh, to support class, pull out my ground support turret, aim it at the objective, go right back to assault. So, you know, that's another benefit to being, you know, what I would consider to be a jack of all trades.
So, you know, um, I tend to get real long winded with these commentaries. So we'll go ahead and revisit um, a lot of the things that I kind of want to talk about with regard to the assault class. We'll also revisit uh, some footage and not, actually let me take that back, not revisit, but we're actually going to uh, showcase um, uh, a little Stova action. Right. So we can have a nice little commentary about the Stova and a few other things. All right. So, hey, um, you know, March is soon. It will be here soon. Dark Souls 2 will be out soon. Uh, Wolfenstein and a few other titles that I really can't wait to get my paws on. So I know the next few months is really going to be busy for my channel, you know, because uh, although I will deal heavily into Dark Souls 2, there are other games that I'm looking forward to play. And I hope you guys will be there on the ride. All right, guys. Well, this is pretty much the end of it. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, video footage and the commentary. And until next time, Martyrs Brigade is